Thank you very much. Well, I will be brief. Uh, I won't even take up all the time that they've given me here uh, because I know we're under a little time pressure. And uh, since I'm a surgeon, I know how to cut things. Uh, <laughs> I certainly want to, uh, to extend a tremendous welcome uh, to all of the students uh, who are here. This is, I think you're going to find uh, a once in a lifetime experience. And you'll have an opportunity to really learn a lot about yourself uh, over the next few days and uh, a little bit more about your value system. Uh, if you're really listening to uh, some of the things that will come out, it will challenge you uh, in terms of what's valuable to you and help you to realize how much of a growth experience life really is. You know, I can remember as a youngster, you know, what kind of risk was I willing to take versus what kind of risk am I willing to take as an adult? And when you think about that, you begin to realize that it really is a growth experience. I remember uh, we used to live near the train tracks. And uh, I never used to like to wait for a train to go by because sometimes they would have, you know, 100 cars or 150 cars. Uh, so, you know, I would just, you know, jump on the train and then walk across and jump off on the other side. Or if it were going particularly slowly, just go underneath uh, the train. And uh, now, you know, my value system at that time was, you know, I need to get where I'm going. Uh, <laughs> whereas now my value system is, you know, I want to be alive when I get there. So, so, you know, it does tend to change uh, over the course of time. But then I can remember, you know, as a resident uh, at Johns Hopkins, uh, one incident uh, it was the time of the uh, AANS, the uh, annual meeting for all the neurosurgeons, so almost all the faculty was away, and there was only one faculty there covering. And uh, a young man had been beaten with a baseball bat and had severe swelling of his brain. Uh, he was comatose, and uh, his CAT scan demonstrated hemorrhages in his frontal lobe and temporal lobe, and he was herniating. Basically, he was about to die. So, you know, I called the attending because I, I felt we needed to take this young man to the operating room, and I couldn't reach the attending. We tried and tried, couldn't reach the attending. Well, a resident can't take a patient to the operating room by themselves. And yet, he was going to die if I didn't. So I said, we're taking him to the operating room. And uh, some people registered surprise, but I said, if we don't, what's the alternative? And I had to end up taking out most of his frontal lobe and a large portion of his temporal lobe. But uh, he did okay, and uh, that was several years ago. Today, he's a psychologist for the uh, Baltimore uh, public school system. So it worked out okay, because my value system at that point was not so much worrying about what would happen if something went wrong, but rather, here was a life that needed to be saved. And you would be amazed at how many people there are who spend a lot more time worrying about what other people will think about them and peripheral issues and miss out on the essential issues. That's what the whole concept of political correctness is all about. I need to make sure that I stay right here in this comfort zone, in this mainstream of thinking, so that no one will think I'm weird. Well, I think you'll find in the course of history that the people who've had the most significant impacts in their sphere of influence have not necessarily been those people who want to stay in that safety zone of political correctness. But of course, in terms of assessing the risk that you take by stepping outside, you have to know what your own value system is. And I, and I hope over these few days, you actually will have the opportunity to spend time thinking about what do I really believe in? What is truly important to me? And not just follow the party line. You know, if you follow the party line, you end up with things like, you know, the United States Congress, where you get nothing done because people are just bickering 
and thinking about what's good for their side versus what's good for another side. And, you know, I give a lot of medical school commencements, and I, I tell the doctors how important it is to get involved in their communities. You know, in this country, you know, at the last turn of the century, not the most recent one, you know, physicians were much more involved in their communities. Uh, and now we've withdrawn into our laboratories and our operating rooms and our clinics, and we don't get out there. And I was talking to Senator Bill Frist a few years ago. He said, you know, Bill, there's only one physician in the Senate. He said, but, you know, if you go back in 25-year blocks, it changes. 25 years ago, there were two. 25 years before that, there were six. And you keep going back to the very first Congress, there were 46. Well, no wonder people always talk about the wisdom of the founding fathers. There were, there were physicians there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we need to start thinking about those kinds of things. But, but the, the important point, of course, being get involved. Don't just stay within your comfort zone. And, you know, if you really want to, to gain fulfillment in life, think about how incredible your brain is. The human brain, the most sophisticated organ system in the universe. Your brain remembers everything you've ever seen, everything you have ever heard, and it influences you. So you need to be careful about what you put in there. But I want you to, I want you to respond to a question. How many people here remember your birthday? Can I just see your hand? Okay, it's almost unanimous. Okay, now, what did your brain have to do for you to respond to that question to give you an idea of how sophisticated your brain is? Well, first of all, the sound waves had to leave my lips, travel to the air, enter your external auditory meatus, travel down to your tympanic membrane, set up a vibratory force, which travel across the ossicles of the middle ear to the over and round window, set up a vibratory force in the inner lip, which mechanically distorted the microcilia, converting mechanical energy to electrical energy, which travel across the cochlear nerve to the cochlear nucleus at the frontal medullary junction, from there to the superior olive oil nucleus, ascending bilaterally up the brainstem to the lamellar meniscus to the inferior colliculus, across to the thalamic radiations to the uh, posterior temporal lobes, begin the auditory processing, from there to the uh, frontal lobes coming down the tractor victors, you're retrieving the memory from the immediate hip hippocampal structure in the mammary bodies back to the frontal lobes to start the motor response at the bed cell level, coming down the cortical spinal tract across the internal capsule into the cerebral peduncle, descending down to the cervical medullary decussation into the spinal gorget gray matter, synapsing there, going out to the neurological junction, stimulating the nerve in the muscle so you could raise your hand. And that, uh, <laughs> that of course, See if you can get one of those rap singers to do that. But uh, that, uh, <laughs> that, of course, is the simplified version of what your brain had to do. You know, I didn't want to get into all the coordinating and the inhibitory influences. We've been here all day talking about that one maneuver. But if your brain can do all that, can you begin to imagine how sophisticated it is? An organ system that can extract information from the past and the present, organize it into a plan for the future. We're the only creatures with the capability of doing that, which means we have some responsibility. And we each have a sphere of influence. And I hope you'll be thinking about that throughout this conference, your sphere of influence and what you can do with it, recognizing that virtually all strife in the world, be it strife in the home, strife in the city, or strife between countries, comes from selfishness. I have to have it my way. You impinged upon my rights. You did this to my people. You know, and if you can start using that enormous brain to learn how to remove oneself from the center of the equation and take the risk of letting somebody else be right, take the risk of being able to consider broadly many points of view. Take the simple risk of saying hello to people in the elevator. You may have to practice CPR, but talk to people in the elevator. Put yourself out on the limb, because can you imagine in your sphere of influence what kind of world we could have if everyone began to think of others first and not just of themselves? We have the capability of doing that. We call ourselves civilized human beings, and yet we continue to fight at the same rate that the barbarians did 2,000 years ago. 
I think there are people in this room who utilizing that enormous brain and understanding that sphere of influence can change that. And I challenge you to think about that over these few days. Thank you.